Can everybody hear me? Can anyone understand me? Okay, good. So I always try to, I always try to start with that. So this is my third year in a row uh, at Madrid Travel Think, so I'm very excited to be here. And uh, for the third year in a row, Javier, Javier has managed to put me after lunch. So I think that's always the, the worst time slot because everybody's kind of a little tired and, and, you know, after a seven hour morning session, in the, in the States we're done in the morning by like 11.30, here it's like 2.30 or 3, uh, so it's a little different. Uh, but a couple things I want to take you through today, and I'm actually going to uh, piggyback a little bit on the presentation from earlier uh, where you saw like the travel cycle wheel, and that's how we uh, think about it a lot at Google, and I just want to tee you up for that just because that's, uh, that's the process that we're thinking about. So what I want to take you through is wh where we're headed. Um, and uh, to Javier's point, as we think about the business now and into 2011, uh, what's important from a consumer standpoint? Uh, what are we seeing from our advertisers? What trends we're seeing in the space? So a couple things I want to take you through is um, consumer trends. So what's happening in the consumer space right now? What, we can, what can we learn from that? And then from an advertiser perspective, uh, what advertisers are uh, learning and adapting to these trends uh, in the digital space right now. And this is a little slow. Okay. So you guys recognize this a little bit from earlier. This is a little fancier uh, version of uh, the travel cycle process. Um, so this is how we think of travel uh, at Google. We think about it in, in multiple phases. And I think the key point here is to uh, understand that this is not a linear process. So this isn't one end going directly to the other end and then stopping there. Um, so the, these different phases, and I'm going to take you through each individual phase, often feeds the other phases. And when Christine comes up to talk about uh, kind of the sharing side and the experiencing side, these are feeding early in the process with dreaming and researching and actually booking. So this is not a linear process. It's a process that, that, process that continually feeds itself. So let's start with, uh, let's start with the, dreaming, the dreaming phase, maybe. Here we go. So uh, no surprise, everybody's here because of uh, uh, a lot of the work in the online space. So the internet is still the number one inspiration for travelers. 62% uh, of those are still searching online before they travel. And why, why that's important and, and, and why we're all here today is early in the process, I'm not sure where I want to particularly travel. So what do I do? Uh, but, you know, years ago, what I would typically do is I would get a brochure or I'd get a magazine and I would, I would try to figure out a destination or where I wanted to go and where I wanted to stay from that. But what's happening now is uh, people are going online first. And if I'm not going online first, if I'm getting a brochure, and I just did this for myself where I was booking a, a vacation, is I got a brochure, I had some travel destination magazines, and while looking through those magazines, I was going online at the same time, and I was doing searches and figuring out a little more deeper and getting some deeper information from that. Um, but another important trend that we're seeing in the space, which was touched on earlier, uh, is really video. And I actually looked back from my presentation two years ago, and to look at this number now, online video, where 62% uh, of leisure travelers and 69% of business travelers are consulting video before they travel. And video is the perfect format. I mean, we talked years ago where uh, we had thumbnail pictures. Uh, that's all we had. We're, you know, we're, we're in the GDS systems. I would look online. I would get a handful of thumbnail pictures. Now video has really come kind of mainstream and come to you know, the center right now. This number two years ago was 15%. So if you don't think it's a trend and you don't think it's important, you really need to start looking at video. I can touch and feel destinations. I can get a real good feel for what's happening uh, on level with properties just by looking at video. And it's a really important uh, area that you need to think about. So ask yourselves, is your brand present at these uh, inspiration points? So if I'm looking online, I see a video of a destination, I see the video of a hotel, Think about your brand. Think about how your brand fits within that. And I'll give an example. So on the search side, uh, this is a search for family vacation. Um, so it feels like top of funnel, right? Like I'm not, not sure where I want to book, not sure where I want to go. Uh, but family vacation is really important for family-oriented brands. Think of Disney, uh, for example. Destinations like Orlando. Uh, family getaway uh, you know, destinations in the Caribbean. These are spots that are family vacation-based. So this, this type of search term probably doesn't convert immediately. But what it does, it, it gets those type of brands in the consideration set 
early on in the process where I'm figuring out where I want to go, what I want to do, and I need to get inspired. So family vacations, if I'm an advertiser in like Orlando or Disney World, and I advertise on those terms, I have an opportunity early on to talk to consumers in that process and help them understand what my location and what my destination is all about. Here's another example. So on the display side of the business, this is a site for moms. And all the Disney research shows that a high percentage of those booking Disney vacations uh, are moms. And so they're advertising against a site for mothers. And this, and this is a perfect contextually targeted ad for Disney to get in front of the consumers. And then here we go with video. So this is a Delta Airlines, um, we call them brand channel, on YouTube. So basically what Delta did is for all the destinations that they fly into, they had their staff and flight attendants put together videos on those destinations. So very authentic, uh, user generated in a sense, but it gave them an opportunity to let consumers know as they're thinking about where they're going, what there is to do in those destinations, what type of things to think about. So when it, t it comes time to book, Delta's top of mind. Hell, oh, I saw a video on Las Vegas with Delta. I'll probably take a Delta flight there and let me do a little more uh, research on pricing and availability for the Delta flight. And you probably can't see it here, but 180,000 views of this video. And I don't think Delta did much advertising around this, so it was very organic. Uh, people were able to discover it and find it without a lot of advertising behind it. So here's another one. So uh, YouTube, uh, similar to search, is also a search engine. And if YouTube was considered a search engine, it would be the second largest search engine in the world, just by virtue of all the searches. So what we've done over the last couple of years with the acquisition of YouTube has have brought a lot of science uh, to what we do on the search side and taken that science to YouTube. So here I'm, I'm searching for how to pick a cruise. And if you see over here, you have uh, NCL, Norwegian Cruise Lines, is advertising against this particular search. So what this does is this takes me to a vacationer channel that actually YouTube created the content and worked in conjunction with Nor Norwegian Cruise Lines to bring all this video content together. And, and not like the Delta situation where it was, where was kind of generated by individuals, this is professional content where we went to National Geographic and Lonely Planet and a lot of other sources. Uh, to get this information. So as I'm starting to get to this information early in the funnel, I'm starting to get expired. I'm dreaming about my vacation, where I want to go. I move into the next stage, uh, which is researching. Um, and again, no surprise here, the, the numbers are astronomical. People still using the web significantly. Search is the number one tool. So if you think about um, the 22 site visits, so I don't know if anyone's ever, uh, you know, in your, you know, your current studies or your research, you've seen a clickstream report with all the sites that people are going to before they actually book. Very confusing, very convoluted. Um, so it, my, my point in the whole process is there's an opportunity within those 22 sites to gain a customer. And you can be top of mind all the way through that process. But when it comes time to actually purchase, you could potentially lose that customer. Um, and what we've seen over the last couple of years is, is search queries have gotten a little longer where consumers are getting much more demanding with the information that they're looking for and that they want. So a couple years ago, I would do a search for New York hotels. Now consumers are doing searches for new New York hotels near Central Park. So they're getting very demanding and very specific with the questions that they're asking us, which makes our job a lot harder uh, in terms of making sure we're providing them with the information that they're looking for. So again, ask yourselves, do we understand our consumer's path to purchase? So we talked about kind of the upper funnel stuff and we're starting to move it down, down a little bit. So we launched a tool at Google recently called Search Funnels. And the purpose of Search Funnels, and I had to use a, this is a foosball table, but I had to use kind of a, a football or soccer analogy, as we would say in the States, so I can keep everybody's attention on this, is that you know, we all kind of focus on you know, the booking and the last keyword to conversion and give all that credit to that keyword. But what's really happening is there's, there's these whole host of keywords. So go back to the family vacation example. That family vacation, if it led to a booking, there's an eventual keyword that somebody converted on. So what this tool does, it helps you understand that booking path and what's happening with those early funnel terms and how they're impacting terms downstream. So you can focus in on terms that are helping you lead to conversion and then not focus as much on the terms that really aren't, aren't helping you convert. But this is a great tool that we just launched. We've had a lot of success with several partners in the States in terms of looking at the data and surfacing the information so they can be better with uh, their search campaigns. The mobile side, you saw some examples uh, earlier on what's going on with mobile. And through some conversations over the last couple of days, you I understand that mobile really hasn't taken off in the sense from a marketing standpoint or advertising standpoint, but if it hasn't, it's coming. And we've seen over the last six to nine months in the States, it's really started to move at astronomical paces. It's moving because devices are finally catching up with what consumers want to do and what they're looking for. Uh, I'll give you an example. I commute three hours a day into New York City. 
A year and a, three years ago, I would open my laptop for the entire trip. I never open my laptop anymore because I can do everything on my handheld. So as you can see, travel interest is uh, increasing significantly on mobile. And you want to think about, you know, you want to get ahead of this now, right? So when the, when the wave happens over here, are you optimizing your campaign specifically for mobile? So just know that desktop doesn't equal mobile. So work with your teams here to make sure that your campaigns are built out separately uh, and they're really built out for the mobile experience. So now the booking part. So this is what everybody's probably in the room has been focused on for the last several years. And still, it's a lot of what our clients are focused on in the US, where we're trying to help them understand the diff other levels as well with dreaming and researching. Uh, but the booking phase, online and mobile, again, significantly increasing. Over 50% of the bookings uh, in the US are handled online. That number continues to uh, increase every year. So 50% on a big base. It's pretty hard to move that number, so the fact that that number continues to increase year over year shows that the, uh, the interest level is there and the value is there from an online perspective. And mobile continues to rise on the booking side as well. I think the example uh, that you saw earlier, so ask yourself the question, can your consumers find your, your website and easily book within the experience? You saw the example um, of the cruise example where a click to call ad where I have my phone number in there as well as the, uh, the mobile website. So if I'm more comfortable, so cruise is a very complicated, expensive transaction. So I may not be as comfortable dropping $3,000 on my mobile device. I may feel more comfortable hitting the click to call button and calling directly and booking the reservation via, uh, via the call center versus online, or I can book it online. So results from Norwegian Cruise Lines is 31% uh, increase in bookings um, through the call center as well as a significant increase online as well. So the fact that people are spending $3,000 online tells you that this is a growing area and it's going to continue to grow and I look forward to come over here very soon if, uh, if you're not looking at it, get ahead of it now. Um, so let's do, move to the experiencing side. So uh, once I book, the travel process doesn't stop from a, from a searching and booking standpoint. So when I, when I get in market, when I get to a destination, wh where am I going to eat? What restaurants am I going to go to? What activities am I going to do? I'll give you a perfect example. I was trek checking into the trip ambassador uh, on Sunday, and I think I had like a five-minute wait while I was uh, uh, waiting to check in. Opened up my uh, my laptop because my uh, I don't want all the roaming charges uh, here. So I opened up my laptop. In that five minutes, I was able to see if Real Madrid was playing, which I missed them the night before. So poor planning on my part. Um, and I I wanted to see if bullfighting was going on. So bullfighting wasn't going on. I wanted to look at what restaurants I wanted to go to. Was so within that five minute period, I got a lot of quick information. And the reason I was able to get that information, and you need to ask yourself this question as well, is am I making it easy for my customers to get access to this information? Am I able to provide them with this information? First area is Wi-Fi. So the fact that in lobby, I had easy access to Wi-Fi. I could open up my laptop and in five minutes get all this information. So think about the experience in the room. Think about the experience in the lobby. If you're an airline, you're in, you're in flight. You know, if there's already an expectation in the U.S. now that I'll have Wi-Fi on my flights. And if I don't have Wi-Fi on a particular airline, I'm going to fly another airline. Because if I'm flying cross-country for six hours or flying transcontinental, I need to be able to work during those six hours. And Wi-Fi has become an expectation. So make sure you're thinking about what your consumers want during that time, whatever uh, particular market that you sit in. And then the, the other area is um, your, your experience. So here's a couple examples um, from some of our partners within the US. Uh, the one you see on the upper left is a Marriott kiosk that sits in lobbies. So I'm a consumer. I can go to this kiosk. I can look for restaurants. I can make reservations from this device. Great experience. The other is a British Airways. Uh, I've got my boarding pass on my device. Easy to check in. I don't have to print something at home. I don't have to stand in line at the airport uh, to check in. I can do it all on my mobile device. Uh, the bottom, bottom left is an example, Rotterdam. Great app that they built. I can get tons of information, things to do, places to stay, how to get there. Uh, great experience. SPG, loyalty program for Starwood. So it's an individual unit, business unit within uh, Starwood that created a separate app specifically for their loyalty program. And an Avis budget, car rentals very transactional. Uh, I think the number is 15% of all car rental bookings actually happen at the airport. So think about it. I land on a flight. I can open up my mobile device if I don't have a booking already and book my flight on my Avis rental car before I even get off the flight. Very impactful, very powerful. 
And now the aspect of sharing. So I'm not going to get into too much detail here because Christine's going to uh, wow us with uh, all the great work that TripAdvisor is doing. But obviously, uh, reviews is a you know a big area that continues to grow. It's significantly increased year over year. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, when we talk about the travel cycle. This sharing inspires dreamers and inspires researchers and bookers because I'm taking this information uh, from what uh, others are providing and I'm using this to help me make decisions on where I want to travel to, where I want to stay, and the importance of the information that's ever increasing. If you all remember the example earlier of uh, the Disney program, uh, that Disney program of the videos that consumers are posting with it, within that YouTube site for Disney, 25% of them are actually happening at the property, at the Disney Resort. Pretty amazing. So I'm actually taking video, likely on a phone, on a mobile device, and uploading it to YouTube while I'm in the park. So that, 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 that lends itself to immediacy. So if you're not paying attention to that information, you need to think about how you're looking at it, how you're processing it, and actually how you're doing something with it, because uh, reviews and this type of uh, you know, social interaction is only going to continue to increase. So think about how you're part of the conversation. And what I want you to take from this, this, this kind of travel cycle, this travel process as we think about it, think about the consumer trends that, that, that I just mentioned. Think about the questions that I asked and, and how you're involved and how you're thinking about that. And then learn from uh, what others are doing. Uh, there's a lot of people still trying to figure it out as we go. So you know, the kind of best advice is uh, launch and iterate. It's a big thing that we say at Google. We launch a lot of products and figure it out as we go. You may not have it right out of the gate, but get something out there. Mobile, for example, get something out there. Leverage what others are doing, and then you're going to figure it out as you go as this market uh, place continues to change uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll finish up and I'll uh, turn it over to Christine and we'll dig a little deeper into TripAdvisor and I'm sure everyone's going to have a lot of questions at the end. Thank you.